Hello everybody, I am uh, Dr. Derek Keats and I'm here today to help you with some review uh, for your matric uh, genetics. Now, what are we going to do is we're going to look at what are Punnett squares. This is something that comes up quite often on the genetics exam, uh, the matric exam, and it's something that often uh, uh, learners get, get wrong and don't do as well as they should. So given that it is quite likely uh, that there will be genetics uh, questions and particular genetics problems on the matric exam, it's good for us to, do, to review this concept of Punnett squares and how to solve genetic pro uh, genetics problems. Now we're going to start with the concept of the monohybrid cross. And the reason we're going to start with the concept of the monohybrid cross is not because uh, this is something which uh, comes up often on, on the exams, but because in order to get to dihybrid cross and so solving um, Hardy-Weinberg problems, you need a thorough understanding of the Punnett square and the principles behind the monohybrid cross. And so we're going to start with that uh, by way of review so that we can help you um, get to the point where you can actually solve the kinds of problems that you have on, that you'll have on the metric uh, exam. Now, you may recall, of course you recall, uh, that this whole notion of crossing um, and solving solving genetics problems by by crossing uh, is is a consequence of the work of Gregor Mendel. Sorry, I wrote off the screen there, but you know Gregor Mendel. Anyway, Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk and scientist uh, who lived between 1822 and 1884. And he's quite famous for his uh, work on peas, the ordinary peas that we have with our meals from time to time. And his work on peas basically led to the establishment of the science of genetics much, much later because his work was forgotten actually until the 20th century. But one of the people who uh, followed up on, on Gregor Mendel's work was this man, and his name, his name is Reginald, if I can get my pen over in the right place, Reginald Punnett. And so the Punnett Square is named after him. He was quite a productive geneticist during his uh, life in the, in the uh, early part of the 20th century. He lived from 1875 to 1967 um, in the UK, and he's made a major contribution to genetics. But the one that we will become most familiar with is, in fact, the Punnett Square. And it's just a way of looking at the kind of work that Mendel did and helping us solve some of the genetics uh, problems that uh, the early geneticists of the 20th century tackled. So let's clear, let's clear the text off of here. And... Let's move to the next screen. Now, there are some key concepts that you need to understand if you're going to really be able to solve these uh, Hardy-Weinberg and dihybrid genetics problems. And those key concepts are vitally important, and they are key building blocks. They are key building blocks of your genetics knowledge and, and the things that you're going to bring to bear. So if you don't understand them, it is vitally important that you stop this video and go back and review them. So let's look at what some of those things are. Meiosis. Nothing in genetics makes any sense without meiosis. If you don't understand meiosis, then you must go back and, and, and learn about it now. The con concept of segregation, the fact that organisms consist of pairs of chromosomes, and on those chromosomes are genes, and when meiosis happens, those genes are... Those uh, alleles are segregated. The chromosomes are segregated, and the alleles that are on the chromosomes are segregated from one another. You need to understand what is a trait. A trait might be flower color, for example, or, 
or uh, wrinkliness of seeds or color of seeds or height of plant, etc. Those are traits or characters. Then you need to understand especially the distinction between, you need to understand what a gene is and especially the distinction between a gene and an allele. If you can't get that straight, then you're not going to be able to thoroughly, properly understand uh, the genetics problems and solve them. And the chances are you're going to have to write about those genetics problems as well. And if you can't use the words gene and allele correctly, then you're going to lose marks, and you're going to lose those marks unnecessarily. So thoroughly understand the nature of genes and alleles. Pe people often use them interchangeably, and they can't be used interchangeably. And if you do that on an exam, you're going to be marked down, and this is unnecessary because it's real, relatively easy. A gene <clears throat> is, is the thing on the chromosome, the bit of the chromosome, the bit of DNA, uh, that is responsible for determining a particular trait or character. Now, the, because the gene cuts across two chromosomes, uh, each chromosome has one allele for the gene. And so when you talk about the gene, you're talking about both chromosomes. And when you're talking about the allele, you're talking about only one of those chromosomes. And when you talk about alleles in the plural, you are talking about both uh, of the alleles that make up the gene. And you need to understand this distinction because if you don't, it's going to cause you problems on the exam. Then you need to understand the concept of a dominant allele versus a recessive allele. Now, if this doesn't make any sense to you, then please go back and do yourself a favor and spend 15 or 20 minutes reading up on this in the textbook. It won't hurt. Um, then there is the concept of phenotype, the physical expression of the gene. So a phenotype might be uh, if the flower is going to be purple or orange, um, then the phenotype will be orange flower or, pur uh, or purple flower. Then there is the concept of the genotype. Which of the alleles for a given gene does an organism possess? And that is its genotype. Now, if you don't understand genotype, go back and review it, because none of this stuff is going to make any sense to you. Now, the genotype may be homozygous, or it may be heterozygous. If it's homozygous, that means that both the alleles are the same. Whether they're dominant or recessive, it doesn't matter. They can be homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive. Yeah? If it's heterozygous, that means it has one dominant allele and one recessive allele. Simple. Okay, so now we're going to look at the concept of a monohybrid cross, and you need to understand what a monohybrid cross is. That is, that we're crossing for the, for the trait that is controlled by a single gene. Okay. Now, the P generation is the parent generation. It's the first generation that we cross. The F1 generation is the, all of the offspring of that parental cross. That's the F1 generation. If we allow those F1 generation to interbreed rand at random or freely, then we end up with the F2 generation. That is the, all of the offspring of the random interbreeding of the F1 generation. Now, if you don't understand any of these concepts, please do yourself a favor, pause the video now, and go back and review them. Go and find uh, information in, in your textbook uh, by Googling, by looking for videos on YouTube, etc., etc., reading up on it on Wikipedia, wherever you want to read on it. But for heaven's sakes, don't try to proceed to build on a shaky foundation because your house will fall down. Okay, so now let's build our foundation. Let us, here is our Punnett square. So let's imagine that we're going to cross some flowers. Excuse my drawing here, but we're going to cross some flowers. Okay, now you can't cross flowers, can you? You can't put flowers into a jar and shake them up and then get babies, baby flowers out of them. What you cross is actually the gametes. Not so. And the gametes are a consequence of what process? They were consequence of meiosis. And in plants, those gametes are pollen and ovules. And in animals, those are eggs and sperm. And so what we cross to get the results that we want to see in, these, uh, in this Punnett square is, in fact, these gametes. And so to fill this table, we need to imagine, because we're doing this theoretically, we need to imagine that we have crossed some 
gametes, and let's imagine that we're doing it for flowers. So we imagine that we've crossed the gametes uh, of some flowers, and we have produced uh, a result. And that result, of course, happens by the process of fertilization. And so what we see in a Punnett square is nothing more than the segregation that happens during meiosis, the separation of the alleles into the, into the gametes, and their recombination during fertilization. And that's all that the Punnett square represents. It doesn't represent anything else. And if you understand that, it's a fairly simple process uh, to come to grips with. So now let us do what Mendel did, and let's start with some pea plants, and let's do a crossing to illustrate the principles of the Punnett square and the monohybrid cross, because this is only by understanding this that we're going to get to the dihybrid cross later on. Now, this cross is the first generation, the parent generation. This is the first cross that we make, the P generation. Okay. So now, what we need to do is we need to understand that what we're looking at here is a trait. And the trait is, you know what the trait is? The trait is flower color. Okay? So that's the trait that we're looking at. So we're looking at uh, the trait of flower color. And in order to understand the genetics of this, we need to understand that there is a phenotype. That is the expression of the underlying genetics in its, in its physical form. And so we have two phenotypes here in the parent generation. We have a purple phenotype and we have a white phenotype. So what we're we crossing when we do this cross, we're not crossing the flowers, we're not crossing the trait, we're not crossing the phenotype. We are crossing the gametes of those two flowers. Okay, so now the other piece of this that you need to understand is the concept of the genotype. Now the genotype is basically the makeup of the gene for flower color according to what alleles make up that gene. And remember there's only two possibilities, two, uh, there's only two alleles which give all the poss three possibilities. It's, it's either homozygous dominant, it's heterozygous, or it's homozygous recessive. And we know this because the white flower is recessive. The allele for white flower, I should say, is recessive. It's important to know that we're talking about the alleles and not the flowers. Huh? And the allele for purple flower is dominant. Okay, so there are two possible genotypes that can give us a purple flower. If we represent the dominant allele by a capital P, large P, and the recessive allele by a small p, we can see that the, the purple flower can have one of two genotypes. It can be homozygous dominant, or homozygous for the dominant allele, or it can be heterozygous, big P, little p. The white flower can only be one thing. It has to be homozygous recessive. And so that is represented by the two little p's. So homozygous homozygous this is homozygous and this is homozygous this is homozygous for the dominant allele and this is homozygous for the recessive allele and this is heterozygous heterozygous if you can read my writing on the screen here so this gives us a sense of what we're looking at here we are going to cross a purple flower and a white flower. Okay. Now, for the sake of, of theory here, what we're going to do is we're going to cross a homozygous dominant 
with a homozygous recessive. So we, we can see what the consequence of this kind of cross is. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to take this parental generation, the homozygous uh, capital P, or large P, the homozygous for the dominant allele, and homozygous for the recessive allele. And so we take the, the first parent and we segregate these two. And so we have big P and big P. And we take these alleles and we segregate them. And we have little p and little p. And we make this cross. So we do this one and this one. And we end up with a big P and a little p. We do this one with this one, and we end up with a big P and a little p. And we take this one and this one, and we end up with a big P and a little p. And again, this one with this one, and we end up with a big P and a little p. What does that mean? It means that our F1 generation here are all heterozygous. Sorry for my poor writing. Um, heterozygous. So when we cross a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive, all of the F1 generation will always be 100% heterozygous. Now, what does that mean in terms of the phenotype? Well, what it means is that the phenotype will all be purple. Why? Because the allele for purple flower is the dominant allele. The allele for white flower is a recessive allele. So it is not expressed in the phenotype of these plants. And the phenotype for all of them is purple flower. Okay, so now let's take our F1 generation here, which we know is heterozygous. So big P, little p, big P, little p. And let's carry out an F1 uh, cross. So when we do this, let's take this one here. This one segregates, the alleles segregate into a big P and a little p. And this one, the alleles segregate into a big P and a little p. And so what happens when we do the cross? The gametes combine, and the offspring have the following genotypes. Big P and Big P here cross to give us Big P, Big P. Homozygous dominant. Here we have a little P and a Big P, which gives us a Big P and a little P, which means that it is heterozygous. And here we have a little p and a big p. So again, we have big p, little p. And so we have uh, a heterozygous uh, genotype. And there we have a little p and a little p. And here we have a homozygous recessive. Now, what are the phenotypes going to be for these? Well, it should be straightforward. Uh, purple flower allele is dominant. So homozygous dominant is going to be purple. Heterozygous is going to be purple, and homozygous recessive is going to be white. And so when it comes to the phenotype, we have a 3 to 1 ratio of purple to white flowers. When it comes to the genotype, We have a 1, 1 here, to 2, 2 here, the heterozygotes, to 1, here the homozygous uh, recessive. So 1, homozygous dominant, to 2, heterozygous, to 1, homozygous recessive. Make sense? 
yeah, it should make sense. And of course, the result of that is that the flowers are 3 to 1, 3, sorry, 3 purple, 3 purple, drew the circle in the wrong place there, sorry, 3 purple to 1 white. Okay, this is getting a bit cluttered, so let's clear it. Now you can see what we have here is a phenotype of three to one. Three purple to one white. And a genotype of one heterozygous dominant to two, sorry, homozygous dominant uh, to two heterozygous to one homozygous recessive. And that's what happens when we carry out such a, a cross uh, resulting from the F1 generation. And this gives us the F2 generation, um, which is now a 3 to 1 phenotype and 1 to 2 to 1 genotype. And that's all for now. I hope this makes sense, and we'll come back in a little while and we'll look at the Die Hybrid Cross. I'm Dr. Derek Keats, and this resource is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution License. Bye for now.